and we are live. What's up, Jake Simon? How you doing, man? <laughs> and it's, you? it's Simon. Simon, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like Simon and Garfunkel? No, just, just, <laughs> just Simon. Okay. No, I really thank you for so my invitation. It's a real honor. Well, we've known each other for a while, so how, yeah. can I ref how can I refuse, right? Yes. No, and you maybe this is the this is the right time to look for for guests because they can tell you. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not at home at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so I'm taking a little advantage of the quarantine in a good way, of that's course. Okay. That's okay, man. Take it. <laughs> take advantage of any and all goddamn situations. Yeah. So first of all, I would like if you can introduce yourself a little bit to the to the audience. Right. Yeah. Well, my name is Jed Simon, and uh, I'm old as fuck. And <laughs> I've played at a whole bunch of bands over the year, from uh, Armorous to Frontline Assembly to Strapping Young Lad to Zimmer's Hole to Tenet to Vimic to Scar the Martyr. And probably a few other. Oh, there was my Kiss tribute band. I think we were called Strange Ways, uh, and a number of others. Uh, yeah, guitar playing is is good fun, man. Yeah, tribute band. <laughs> yeah, you... dude. I don't know if you can see that, but that's my Ace like... Fra that's my Ace Frehley tattoo. Okay, so it's a Kiss tribute band. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge Kiss fan of old, not of new. And uh, and by new I mean anything after 1980. Uh, okay. So I the you know when people ask me about my guitar playing and stuff, and I go, well, the reason I picked up guitar is because of Ace Frehley, uh, and the reason I continue to play guitar is because of Malcolm Young from ACDC. So that that pretty much sums up my entire persona in, in one okay. go, okay, or in two goes, as it were. So you are not a fan of the more new Kiss stuff, like I don't know, Psycho Circus, for example. I'll just let Enjoy my si I'll just let my silence speak volume. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no paint, no, no bueno, no bueno. No. <laughs> okay, now that's great. Now that your career is is really is fucking mm -hmm. amazing, man. Oh, thanks. As... I, I never I never really thought of it as that, and maybe that's that's to my detriment over the years because for me it's always been. I never looked at it as a career. And like I said, you know, a lot of my friends look at it as a career and, and they do probably better for themselves as a result. But for me, it's just that I just like the way a guitar sounds. And that's just, that's always what I followed. I love that. I love that sound. So that's what I do. And wherever it takes me, that's, that's what it is, you know, and I don't try to do anything except for maybe Vimic, but I just like the way fucking electric guitars sound, and that's that's what's driven me, and and still drives me, even though my drive is here. And when yeah. I was younger, my drive may have been, oh, I'm off to the scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, I understand that very well. Yeah, yeah. But can you take us back a little? How you start to play guitar? Like... Uh, it's, well, um, I always knew that I wanted to play guitar. Uh, when I was a lot younger, I'd say uh, pre-teens. I didn't start, uh, just, to, just to preface all of this, I didn't start playing guitar until I was 17. I didn't even touch a guitar. Um, <clears throat> and that's partially my fault and partially other people's fault for not really understanding that, hey, this kid likes this. Maybe we should help him out. Anyway, <laughs> um, I played drums for a little bit, and then you know, then I saw Ace Fraley, and it was game game over. And... and uh, I heard this, the musical stylings of Bachman Turner Overdrive back in the mid '70s. Uh, uh, they're a Canadian uh, rock and sometimes metal band, and they had a couple of really good albums in the '70s: Four Wheel Drive, Not Fragile. Which really, when I heard those sounds, I was like, "That's what I want to do." Um, but I didn't know it, and and even up through my teens, when I got my first guitar, and all through those years, I didn't really know what was driving me. I just had to do this thing. And I talked to my school head, my school, uh, my childhood school friends, excuse me, <laughs> uh, my childhood school friends. And they're like, oh yeah, all you ever talked about is you're going to, you're going to be in a band and you're going to fucking do this thing and all that. And I'm like, I don't remember any of that, but I do, <laughs> I, I do remember the unrelenting 
drive that I had. It was, it was fucking ferocious and I could not stop. I could not stop. And I hurt people along the way and, and I did what I could to get where I needed to be without even thinking about it until yeah. I'm much older now. So there's, there's the trail of the trail of destruction <laughs> as it were <laughs> to get, to get to where I was is, is it's probably not so different with a lot of guys, you know, True. um, you, but you, 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 you just, say... you're, fo- you're following a dream and you just, you got, you got to follow yeah. it through. You're just, you're fucking, you got to do it, you know? Yeah. So I'm, th- I'm thankful to all those people that helped me even when I didn't know it, you know what I mean? Mm. But determination, like you say, for me, that's the, that's the key because there's a lot of people or young people <laughs> like you that, uh, start to play guitar or start to dream to be in a mm-hmm. band and they just quit because it's, they, they yeah. don't have the, you know, the, yeah. And, and that's, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not here to criticize anybody. It's everybody follows their own path. And, uh, like I said, for me, it was, it was an insatiable drive that I can't even quantify with words now as an older guy, because I'm not that same person as I was when I was sure. a teenager, when I just, when I discovered that I could pick up the singing and go, you know, like, <laughs> holy <laughs> fuck, you know, <laughs> it, it's an indescribable feeling of just like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, I'm glad I followed it through, you know? Mm-hmm. And you discover it by yourself, like yep. I don't know, like you buy an app, or you buy a guitar. And... Well, I got sent to private school when I was when I was younger, and it was not I was I wasn't a very nice kid, and and I say this often is like if I hadn't have discovered guitar, it my life may have taken a, a kind of shitty direction, you know. Really, like become a doctor or something? Just, just, <laughs> not, just no. <laughs> But just in trouble with the police and just you know, oh, okay. be, be, being a no good fucking kid, you know what I mean? And yeah. and having something to do yeah. that that drives you like a, just an that shut out your it, shut out it, your energy. It 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 for it didn't force me. It focused me in a way that that was yeah. I think really positive. Hmm. Uh, so it was a wonderful thing, you know. Uh, I, I'm just I try to think back on all those years, and I'm like, oh my god, what the. F- Fuck, but it's <laughs> it, it's what you do. You you ha, you you you're you're set on that path. You're you're following whatever it is you follow, and you you cannot stop. And it's not because you're thinking about oh I can't stop. I have to keep going. It's just you don't stop. There's something inside you, instinctual, mm. uh, predatory. You're just fuck dog dog dog. You know, like, <laughs> gotta go. You know, sure. And you have any, I don't know, a funny story when you were starting and you, well, know, my, you, you, you face some obstacle and you just uh, push into there, it. There, there, there's never a lack of obstacles and that, that, that goes right up to present day. And I think that's the same with any musician, any professional, any, mm. anybody. Uh, mm. My very first band was called The Intruders and we were a cover band. And, uh, we were, we were actually pretty good, but oh, I guess we'd all say that, wouldn't we? Uh, <laughs> but we do, we do all of our cover songs until the end of the set. And then because I'd been sent to private school just previously, I still had my private school uniform and it was the, the jacket and the tie and the shorts. And we would do an entire set of ACDC at the end of our show. Of course. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> even, but even then, I didn't, you know, I I was Angus. I wanted to be Angus, but I didn't know. I was I was I was always Malcolm. I was never Angus. But that's that's what we did, and that's that's how we kind of did our thing. But then that band didn't work out, and I went on to. Um, I looked for an ad in the paper, and there's this band. I lived in a small town outside of Victoria, British Columbia, called mm-hmm. Souk, BC, about 20, 25 miles away, forty kilometers, kind of thing. And uh, I looked in the paper and there was this band looking for a guitar player. They were, they were called Northern Thunder. And I'm like, ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> So I took, I'd take my guitar and I, I would hitchhike into the city to get to this band, wow. uh, uh, to get to the, uh, uh, to get the rehearsal session. Rehearsal. And anyways, I got the gig and I was in the band and that lasted for about two months. And then right before they got their first big gig, they kicked me out of the band because they said I didn't have what it took. Um, no. 
and I've never forgotten. Maybe that was so. Well, that was the boot in my ass that really got me going because, like, fuck you, you know. <laughs> um, but I'll never forget that. And <clears throat> when they kicked me out, they gave me the number of this of this fellow that they had met, who was looking for a uh, looking for a guitar player for his his new band. And his name was Mike Sudar, and the band was called Armorous. Now, so I called Mike, and we became fast friends. And next thing you know, Armorous was formed. That was my first real real band we were signed in 1988 i believe we did three we did three Sorry. demos is the yeah. same is the same guy who the same band that kicked you out that give you the contact of this guy? yeah isn't that funny yeah crazy right canadians are so nice yeah we are so nice. <laughs> yeah hey man I, I gotta kick you to the curb but hey here's a number somebody who's different <laughs> <laughs> sorry eh <laughs> Um, anyway, so, and, and, and that was, and that, that started a whole relationship, you know, and, uh, we armors, we did a bunch of demos and we did an album that never came out until about five years ago, I guess, because the uh, record company folded back in the eighties. And, uh, incidentally, just to fast forward a few years from that point, when we first started strapping on glad Mike was the other guitar player in strapping on glad at that point. When when Devin was just singing, the very infancy of, of Strapping on Glad. And then Dev decided he wanted to sing and play guitar, so we had to let Mike go, and that sucked, but that's that's the way it worked out. Uh, but that, wait a minute, Strapping let Devin, he didn't play guitar I, at the in beginning? The, in the uh, Hold on. No problem. Uh, I, I'm burping a lot, so there, there must be a problem here. Yeah, you're too dry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when Strapping first started, Devin had pretty much done that first record. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> he had done that first record pretty much on his own. I contributed to a few songs uh, as far as playing goes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we jammed together in, in, in Zimmer's Hole's basement. That's, that's where the real kind of, okay. that's where it all kind of started. But then Dev went off and, and recorded, recorded that first album. But then he, he asked me to come in after all was said and done and he's like i don't want to play guitar i just want to sing and i'm like i know the guy so i called mike and mike came and joined the band and that's that was how that worked out <clears throat> and it it lasted about a year and then dev decided he wanted to play guitar again and and that's how the next evolution of strapping came about and oh, at that yeah. point at that point we still had adrian and ash on bass and get and drums respectively and um by that time um, Devin had played with Frontline Assembly on Millennium, mm -hmm. and I believe I believe they had just finished Hardwired, and uh, they were looking for a live guitar player. And Dev was like, "Call Jed." So they <laughs> called they called me, and that began a friendship that lasts until this day. And I'm ever thankful to to Frontline Assembly for the experience they gave me because they took me on my first European tour. They gave me my first recording experience, like real professional, like up there shit. So I cut my teeth with those guys and I love them to this day. They're, they're my best friends as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, so when, anyway, a, a, a European tour was ending and I think we were talking to Devin on the phone and he's like, yeah, dude, I got this new drummer. I'm down in LA, you know, Devin had done the Steve Vai thing or whatever. And he's like, Oh I yeah, got, I got this. I got this new drummer for the band. His name's Gene Hoagland. And I'm like, you know, drop the headphones, fucking glasses fall off. My jaw hits the floor. <laughs> and because he didn't know who Dark Angel was and he didn't know who Death mm. was really. He wasn't really in that sort of league of metal. Yeah. So he, did, he didn't know Gene's, uh, Gene's pedigree, but I sure as fuck did. And so when I heard that, I was like, <laughs> oh my fuck, yeah. <laughs> so all the way back to, all the way back to Canada and then down to LA and meet, and meet while well, meeting Gene again, because we played with Dark Angel and Armish years before that. And, and I never thought I'd be in a band with one of my heroes, you know, and then to have that band continue as long as it did. And, and I owe my playing, you know, the, the point that I got to and the player I've become or became or whatever it in large part to Gene, you know, because he was so goddamn solid and, and mm -hmm. I just, I just locked up with him. And that's where that, that whole Malcolm Young thing, it's just like all about the rhythm. And it's all about just locking in, you know, mm -hmm. and let, let Devin take the lead lead the band and me and gene and byron just kind of hold the back end you know what i mean mm. it was it was so exciting to, to be part of that yeah <clears throat> no i i i remember the well unfortunately i never saw a let 
show live. What? Oh, you're fired, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. No, but I had the. Um, I can remember the the video. What was the name? The video that you released with all the all the clips and a show. I, I don't remember. know. We did a bunch of videos, so yeah. Yeah, but no, it was a, actually a live show, and it's amazing how everything so so um, like a machine. Mm -hmm. you no, know? but a technical question: you you were playing with a click, or nope, no, no. Nope. in the Be very. Uh, let, 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 let me just just fucking cover this completely. Yeah, um, yeah. In, the, in the very beginning of Strapping on Glad, yeah, we played to a click. Uh, we actually used to run all of the samples and keyboards and, and background vocals on a VCR. What? Uh, <clears throat> and, <laughs> and and it was a two tr new two tracks, so a stereo okay. VCR. Hoo -hoo. Yeah. And and half of that would run click track, and the other half would run the samples, and our drummer would wear a headset, and that's how yeah. we, we would play. <clears throat> now, when Gene came to the band, all of that went away. So, and we got live keyboard players and because he you know, didn't like uh, play with a click. No, because clicks are, nah, I'm not going to say it, but <laughs> say it, say it, say it. Yeah. <laughs> I love click and I play to a click like a motherfucker now and always will. But live, I think no, I think clicks have really no place unless you, unless you're, unless you're running lights and running like a big production, you know, mm. like, then they definitely have their place. Like for assembly, but, for example. <clears throat> yeah. Frontline assembly is a perfect example. Um, or later on, like a band, like, uh, whatever, I'm not going to get into it, but, um, <laughs> strapping on Glad was a live band and that's, mm. you know, Devin was the leader. He was the, the songwriter. I mean, I contributed a bunch of songs, a bunch of ideas, I should say, and a mm. few songs. Um, and I'm happy and ever grateful that Dev let me contribute in that way. But essentially he was, he was, he was strapping. He is the strapping young lad. Gene, Byron and myself were the support team. And we had a chemistry that clicked obviously. And that's when, to me, that's when bands get lucky is when they have that chemistry. And we were a fucking ferocious live band and anybody that's a strapping fan or is watching this way, you, you know it, you know it, I knew yeah. it. We felt it. It was yeah. for all of the difficulties that we faced. Those it really you know, changed. Those, uh, it kind of changed music. Yeah, those yeah. forty-five minutes to an hour and a half to when, however long we were on stage, mm. all the difficulties that we faced were worth it for that amount of time that we got to spend on stage together because we were fucking unfucking touchable and and a little bit of an ego there, I guess, perhaps because we were that good. I, I truly and honestly believe to this day that we were that good and it's a shame it didn't continue, but mm. now I'm older, I'm wiser, you know, and we've gotten over those disappointments. Mm. Uh, and it was probably for the better that it ended when it did, but fuck, we had a great run and we were a good band and I'm thankful to all of that that happened, you know, and especially now I'm not bitter anymore or, you know, maybe a bitterness will like, Hello, how are you today? You know, but it's, <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be, and and it, you it, you you get shocked by by a band's sudden dissolvement, and uh, hmm. and uh, you, you have to you have to you got to get on with it, you know. So hmm. and that's that's what it is. But Dev and I have have rebuilt our friendship, and. Now we're friends again without any of those overarching strings attached or anything awkward or weird. You know, it's just, we can just be friends, talk about our kids and about oh, that. Gu cool. th this guitar sound or dude, that's a nice guitar or, you know, like all of that stuff. So it's, it's a really mm -hmm. cool thing. And can you take us back to, to the beginning of Stramiolet? Like how, how this thing is started is like, I don't know. Well, <laughs> It was it was Dev playing with Steve, and you know Dev got a little, I guess, disillusioned with. What is that noise? Oh, it's my cat, man! Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I I have Freddy, one too. Freddie, <laughs> Freddy. okay, hold on, Freddie, yeah. Freddie, kill, Freddie. He won your. His name is Freddie. Freddie, destroy. He won your attention. What's up, buddy? <laughs> he's my he's my studio buddy. Um. Oh, come here, buddy. Come here. Let me show you to the audience. Yeah, he won that. Ah, oh, 
Yeah, there you go. Look right there. Ready. <laughs> Attack. Okay. Right, go, on, go and kill something. <laughs> You're a good dude. Um, so Steve was pretty, he was really disenfranchised with, with the whole, the whole, I guess, I guess he just got thrust into a world that he was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? And so he, he wrote that pretty much that first strapping record is, is him just kind of throwing, throwing the fingers around, I guess, or just, he just, he, I don't know. He was, he was everything that had built up in his head came out in a flood. And, and that was that first the record and, and, and city, you know, like it re really oh, was. Okay. Stream stream of consciousness sort of thing. But was like kind of frustration with something specific or no, there's in no general story. there's no there's no specifics involved. It was just he was just I think maybe he was I, I can't speak for him, you know? Sure. But I think he was frustrated with the with the corporate rock world and just like oh, uh, fuck you. <laughs> you know, I'm you want I'm gonna do something, I, I'm gonna get my yayas out here and here you go, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And then you just start to play with with him and yeah yeah no it's uh, it's amazing I remember the first time I listened to your letter was uh, was amazing it was yeah some, something like nothing nothing else and yeah. I was uh, kind of surprised be, because of the mix with keyboards but not yeah. like for example like front assembly. No, it was like no. really, really heavy. Everything heavy metal su and su super compressed and then yeah. super in your face. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and no, that was that was pretty much it. Um, you know, I have to say, just uh there was a band, one of the bands that I played in was a band called Caustic Thought. And that mm -hmm. was with By well, was with Byron, and that's I, you know, I'd known Byron for a long time, but I decided I didn't like that band anymore and I quit and they replaced me with Devin, and that's how they got to know Dev and it's weird oh, because okay. because back in those days we all played in each other's bands and eventually all these people came together and you know did this thing yeah you know? it's, it's because it's, of the scene the metal scene in in canada was like really tight well, well in you know canada more. canada is and i'm sorry to some of my canadian friends but <laughs> the the my screen is reversed but here's here's vancouver and then there's yeah. Where I'm at, Toronto and Montreal, and that's really about it. There's not a whole lot in between, and I okay. apologize. I apologize to those folks <laughs> in between. Um, but Vancouver had a real special music scene, mm. um, and I'm sure other places in Canada did too. But Vancouver had a very special music scene. We all knew each other. We all supported each other's bands, and we all played in each other's bands, and it created a really fucking vibrant thing. Oh, and was there was great. a lot there was a lot of side projects and a lot of other bands that came out of that and uh and i wish that was still there but we all kind of you know as we got older we kind of you know we left right. the net we mm -hmm. you know i don't live in vancouver i live in philadelphia now like yeah. i couldn't i couldn't get any further away from it <laughs> but the but the the scene that you know and i'm not going to say we created but it was it was built on the foundations of a lot of the old time speed metal bands and, and thrash and punk and there was always a real close connection and, and I think one of my favorite bands from back in that time was a band called Witch's Hammer friends friends of mine to this day and they were like they were the epitome of of aggression and just like balls out like fist in your face and and my old band Armors played with them a lot and they they they, they consistently blew us away. And and I think they've influenced me a lot over the years, even though I I, I really didn't realize it. But they're fantastic. But there was a lot of bands of that caliber in Vancouver, mm -hmm. and they all catered to each other in, in some weird way. It was really cool. Yeah, and in Canada there was a equivalent to I don't know, <laughs> like the um, Bay Area. You know, with when the time with uh, Metallica and Slayer and Exodus were playing, there was something happening in Canada at that time, or there was, but it wasn't of it wasn't in that league. It was it was a dip, bit of a different animal. Um, I, I you know I would say we were probably a few years behind the Bay Area in that musical regard. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying it was it was not as good. Um, there was a lot of things happening, especially especially with the punk and hardcore and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, uh, 
but we were we were a little bit behind the Bay Area. The Bay Area has, has always led the charge, and every time I go there, you know, like I went out there to 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 do a lot of the Tenet record back in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, and I felt like I was home because I'm like, oh my god, these <laughs> are all these people and this music, and it's just like, oh, god, god, you know, like I'm just like, oh, I'm in heaven, you know. It was so great. It's it's a wonderful place, and I have a lot of friends there to this day. Hmm. I, I just recently saw a documentary. I don't know. You already watch it. It's Murder on the Front Row. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I hear. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's cheers. Mm -hmm. It's a really fascinating story. And how was your experience playing with the front assembly? Was it not weird, like you know, playing with. Uh, with a lot of scenes and you know in 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 i don't correct me if i'm wrong but you were kind of a um, more like another element of the the mix was not like the like in metal that the the, oh, man, the no. guitar were the no, frontline assembly is frontline assembly they just they wanted they went through you know, a, a, a time where they wanted a lot of guitars and I happened to come along at the right time for all of that, you know? And, and like I said earlier on, when we were talking earlier, it's, I'm eternally grateful to, to, to Reese and Bill hmm. for bringing me into that family, you know, and to Greg really, and, and all the people that were involved in that whole thing, because they gave me my first professional experience. I did my first professional tours with those guys. They showed me the ropes in every way. And so as a, as you know, I'll, I'll just say, you know, as a, a narrow minded metal youngster coming into that situation, yeah. it, I couldn't think of a better way to start your career out because yeah. it expanded my mind so much. And I saw so many things that I had no idea even existed, hmm. um, that it gave me uh, a real leg up on, on a lot of, uh, wherever it was, I was going, you know what I mean? And and yeah. it certainly and it certainly played into Strapping Young Lad, and I know Deb was certainly influenced by them, and you know, and it led it led to a lifelong friendship with with the Fear Factory guys and and all those yeah. those bands and that indus the industrial thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even though I'm a even though I still am certainly capable of being a narrow minded speed metal guy, and and I like <laughs> that because that's my comfort zone. Yeah. I, I've had that experience that gives me it just gives me a, a greater wealth of knowledge about mm. all of those kinds of music. And, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, afraid of that or, or I'm, I'm not really sure how to word it, but it's, it's, it's had an impact on me that, that I can't really, that I can't really, uh, put into words. It's been nothing but yeah. positive. And, and so the whole frontline assembly thing for me was, was a godsend. Mm. And uh, I love those guys. They're, they're friends to this day. I went and played with Frontline Assembly down in Baltimore. Just I think it was last year. Really, they were they were playing in Baltimore, which is about ninety miles from from us from us here, hundred and forty kilometers. I don't know if I have to <laughs> say that, but uh, they're like, "Hey, man, you want to come down and play some classics?" And I'm like, "Of course, you know." So I went down and played <laughs> some of the old some of the old classics with them, and it was great. You know? Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, it was I a really was good there. time. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a really really good time, and you know, my heart goes out to Jared and his family and. And, uh, but it was, it felt really nice to, 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 to hook up with my old buddies again. Oh, that's great. And I remember I had the VHS because I'm, I'm fucking old too. <laughs> I had the VHS, uh, <laughs> of, uh, live wire. Yeah, man. That was my, that was my very first live record. Yeah. And you, you I, I, it. Okay, it, it well. was so, so great. You know? Thanks. I, I don't, I'm not particularly proud of my performances, but you really? know what? It's it's cool. And you know what? I played guitar and I had a little drum set that they made for me yeah. for, the, for all the yeah. songs. When yeah. I wasn't playing guitar, like my favorite was always playing Gun with those guys. Yeah. You know? And I had I just... Yeah. You know, it, was, it was so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Lot, no, and, and, that, and that's another and that's a whole another part of that whole experience where it's like, okay, you're you're in this industrial band, industrial metal band, if you want to take it that far. Mm -hmm. And you play guitar in some songs. On other songs, you have a different job. So get, pick up your drumsticks and stop sulking. You'll get your marshal. <laughs> you'll get your marshals back soon. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, I I think it's kind of 
it's complex because um well it happened to me also with uh vigilante yeah yeah <laughs> with my for sure. own band when when you know you, I, I was making the music and and sometimes um i had well i had like three different guitar players during yeah, yeah. my career because sometimes it's it's kind of hard to when you are a guitar player and someone tell you you can play guitar just in this part yeah not in this part not in this part so yeah oh no, but i course. want to play <laughs> but uh no i i i think you did a great job and i was really thank you was really impressed but how was the i don't know the tech your technical rig in that uh in that period was just a marshall and me what what was what was my rig is that what you're yeah. asking yeah it, it was a uh, gibson flying v and uh marshall 50 watt uh, i and you know frontline when we toured even when we went to europe we flew our gear over there it's not like it is now where you rent gear wherever you're going yeah we, we took everything put it on a pallet on a plane and it went to europe wow so i had my marshall 50 watts and i'm a 50 watt lover and that was it tube screamer that was it that was That's it, it. And and there's still there's so much to be loved about all of that, pure, sure. un unfucked with by you know any kind <laughs> of technology, no fucking plugins, all right? Yeah, just a guitar and an amp, man, and, and a strong right hand. I think that's I think that's kind of what it takes. Yeah, no, that's that was great, and <laughs> I don't know, I I also I grew up as a metal guy like you, and for me at the beginning when I was starting you know was the beginning of metallica slayer and for me like keyboards were for pussies you know <laughs> <laughs> you know like keyboard what uh, I'm, not even, I'm not even going to get into that <laughs> but then i later on i discovered bands like i don't know uh, well i have a cousin that had, was a huge uh, depeche mode fan so he played he played uh, so uh yeah. say so, yeah okay can you play something else <laughs> yeah but, sure. uh, but then i discovered nine inch nails i discovered ministry yeah then later on uh ministry was yeah. a ministry is a huge eye opener because i think they really you know especially when, man they, they really brought guitars to the forefront for a couple of albums there and it was it was so great and uh that the live album that they did, and the name is escaping me right now because I've had a couple of beer. Um, uh, in case, in case you didn't feel like showing up, yeah, <laughs> it, it's probably one of my favorite live albums of all time because it's With so the, it's so aggressive. With the so, fans, I don't so, know, you saw the the video, yeah, yeah, and so guitar driven, and and yeah. I was like, and I was like, oh my god, this is this is fucking amazing. That that certainly played in played into to my uh, uh, influence as well. Um, I was never a big Nine Inch Nails guys. I'm still not. I don't really give a shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't even know where I'm going with that. But fuck yeah, industrial <laughs> music. <laughs> but you were similar when you were starting. Like, no, man, I was a, I like, like I said. You. Like I said, I was a narrow-minded speed metal kid who'd, who'd never, who'd who'd been kind of sheltered, just had this tunnel vision about what metal yeah. is, you know. And then then. And then along comes frontline assembly and just opens your eyes and you're like, oh, yeah. there's this whole world, a whole world out there. And because yeah. of because of that, I think yeah. I, I was I was afforded the opportunity to kind of continue in a successful manner because I, th I I think if I would have stayed to that, you know, I, I say narrow minded sort of lightly because I wasn't I wasn't malicious about it. I just didn't know no. any. I didn't know any better. Of course, it's the same. Like, you know? So to have to, to to have to have that experience and and that knowledge, sure, uh, it was a big help. And that's why I say I'm so thankful to the frontline guys, Bill and Reese, because yeah. they gave me that experience. You know, and, and that worldly knowledge, hmm. perspective. No, perspective is everything. Perspective, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. No, it's great. And well, I saw the after several you led you. Was part of several different bands. Yeah, yeah. Like what? What was right after? Well, right the, after strapping on glad we jumped. Uh, sorry, right, the strapping on Right after strapping, we jumped right into another Zimmer's Hole record. I mean, Zimmer's Hole was always our side band to strapping. Zimmer's mm -hmm. Hole, Zimmer's Hole was together before strapping. We just, like I said, we do an album every ten years. Uh, so we jumped right into our second album, which was no third album, which at that time was uh, in two thousand eight. 
And that was when you were shouting at the devil, we were in league with Satan. And then right after that, I had, I had signed with Century Media for a solo album right before Strapping broke up. So I figured, well, now is a probably I should probably finish this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that turned out to be the Tenant record, which was mm. myself, myself, Gene, Byron, uh, Zetro from Exodus singing, and uh, Glenn from Forbidden playing lead guitar. So that album came out amazing. And I'm, I'm really proud of that album, uh, more so maybe than any others, because it's all me. I, I wrote and I did it all. You know what I mean? So there's a pride with that album that, that that's really deep to me. Mm. Uh, and then there's a couple of years of absolutely fucking nothing. And then Joey called me. Actually, it was Reese that called me. Thank you, Reese. Uh, because <laughs> he, he produced the first Scar the Martyr record. And Chris they were looking, Yeah. And Reece they Hoover were from Frontline. From, from Frontline. They were looking for a guitar player for that record. And Reese is like, Jed. So they called me and I did a couple of demos and I guess they liked my fucking noodling sensibilities. I hate playing leads, but that's what I did. <laughs> and uh, I guess one was at least good enough to get me in the band. And, and that, for, and that began that entire whole thing with Scar the Martyr and Vimic and mm. all of that. And uh, yeah. And then during that time, I've just, I've just been doing Zimmer's hole on the side again. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And uh, and then building this new band in Philadelphia, which has been a really long. It's taken. It's, we've been trying to do it for about ten years now, which is about right for me. It took me ten years to write the Tenet record, Not so hurry. I'm a, I, I'm about at the time where where I'm ready to release this new band. Maybe not right today because things are all fucked up, but um, <laughs> the music is essentially written. I'm just we're still looking for a singer, and I can't I just can't get in my head exactly what kind of singer it is we're looking for. But it's it's going to be somewhere between uh, uh, Alex from Christian, who is my absolute fucking hero on death metal vocals, and then you know like a Dio guy or something like that. So the search is on for a vocalist right now. But the okay. music is all the music's all written. And uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. And then, of course, there's my everyday routine, which is being dad, you know. And uh, that's 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 life now. Life is good. I got nothing to fucking complain about except being stuck at home, you know, and having to put a mask and a bunch of gloves on to go grocery yes. shopping, which that's is crazy. You know, we we all have to do it. But I'm kind of over it now, man. I'm I'm ready to fucking breathe in somebody's face, and you know. <laughs> How is this situation in Philadelphia right now? It's it's good. We're still uh, Philadelphia is a major city uh, mm-hmm. in Pen- in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania is always the coolest state to live in because it's got S Y L in the middle. I'll just let that one leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but we're in the red zone, so because it's a major city, uh, we're, everything is still very restricted here. Um, so nece- necessities only: grocery shopping, gasoline, that kind of stuff. Uh, but the, 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 re, the, re, the restrictions are slowly lifting and I think they're eventually going to get to us. I'm totally ready for it. I'm over it. You know, I, I don't want to get into the whole, I don't want to get into politics in any way, shape or form. And I won't. Okay. Uh, because I have nothing to say about the orange Cheeto in charge. But did, I, <laughs> did I just say that? Fuck. What? <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's, it's a very serious issue. And, I'm glad people are taking the necessary precautions, but I mean, right now I got people up on my deck outside, you know, we're, we're entertaining people today, but we have like three friends overall. We're all sitting like 10 feet apart. Mm-hmm. The kids are in the living room sitting 10 feet apart and everybody's having a good time. Nobody's sick. We're going to get through this. And, yeah. and, and at any time now you're going to be able to go into your grocery store and buy a jar of peanut butter without a mask. It'll be great. Yeah. But how it work in Philadelphia? You need like um, uh, what's the name? Well, here in France, you 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 had to well not anymore, but you had to have uh, feel like a form explaining no. that you <laughs> no no none of that shit. Uh, we but, weren't allowed. We weren't allowed to leave the city for a while. If that's what you're kind of getting at, we were, we had to stay within state lines as well. Okay. No, if I tell you <laughs> how it was here in France, you will. Oh, here comes here comes my son down the stairs and his friend. Okay. What's, what's up, guys? Are you guys going to watch some TV and play some PS4? <laughs> Are you guys do what you want, man. I'm almost finished. It's all be good. And this uh, this is it, right? Of course. All, all, all the rock and roll shit. It's like I, it, it, 
at the heart of it, every day I'm still dad. I'm still a husband. And, and yeah, that's my that's my that's my role now. Rock and roll is it, it's not I'll be finished soon, Eddie. <laughs> See, <laughs> but that but that's life now. You know what I mean? Like it's sure. it's not the rock and roll and then the touring and the the record making and that's all it's not as important as as being dad and husband and and sure. all of that kind of stuff now you know i got a you know i built a pretty nice little studio and and i do my thing but i don't get down here quite as much as i used to because i have other things i need to attend to yeah of course and that and that's okay and how you i, I don't know if i am um can share some stories that you you had on the road like if something i don't know for example the first time in europe <laughs> nope how, how, <laughs> how was your first time in europe it was killer what can i say i, 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 I was a i was a, a fucking kid from the pacific northwest of canada with no idea what the world looked like thrust into the european industrial techno scene and with the, and, with the people and, wearing and, and We're going, go, going to going to clubs like after shows and stuff and have it i can't open my eyes that wide anymore because <laughs> it was it was su such a an incredible <laughs> fuck i, I, I don't, don't have any I, i don't have any stories because it was just it was all so incredible and i was just like what the fuck is going on but again that's that served to enhance my overall perspective. yeah perspective exactly man yeah a lot of latex I guess. Yeah, fuck latex. I'm, I'm <laughs> latex makes you sweat, and uh, if you're gonna wear something, wear leather because leather. Yeah. <laughs> I like leather. No, but I, I guess that in the, in the audience for you was kind of different than the audience. Of Completely, I had no, I had no idea that even existed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was a real eye opener, but you know, and and now I'm thankful for it because it gave you, it gave, like you said, perspective keeps coming up, and that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah, and. I don't know if I'm, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you have a good sense of humor for sometimes, me. <laughs> sometimes. But Ow! You, 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 have you, a, you, you know what the funniest thing is right now? Speaking of sense of humor, I can't fucking see you at all. You're blurry as fuck. So hold on. Really? <laughs> Let's inject okay. some real life into this shit. Yeah. Oh. Now you're Clark Kent. Ah, ah, <laughs> now I can see I quit. I'm out. I don't, I don't. <laughs> no, it's great. No, I, ha I have my glasses off because I thought that would be cooler because the lighting is always making me these weird shadows. I look like I got some kind of kiss box makeup on. Yeah, it's yeah, great. yeah, they're coming off anyway. <laughs> no, because I was thinking, for example, um, Devin, he He's really like that because you when you saw when when you see the shows, he liked to he liked to make jokes and goof around. We were all like that. We were that, that, that nothing's changed. We're still like that. That's that's why Zimmer's Hole existed because we needed some place to 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 explore our ridiculous humor. You know what I mean? I think that's great. You know, it's, it's so different that you know the the pose of. Kind of um, yeah. the cliche of metal guys, like we're mm -hmm. not. We we would never, we never, <laughs> we, we were never so serious that you know that there was there was always a smile lurking somewhere. Yeah, you know? and, no, and e even when I was like, oh, I, I was still laughing inside my head because yeah, of course, you know, if you you got to be able to laugh or you're just you're just too much of a fuck you know, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> No, but that that's what I really like about the shows of Serbia Live because uh, Devin was always making jokes and mm -hmm. everyone was laughing. It was like a cool vibe, even if it right. was aggressive. He was trying, you know, he was trying to make everybody comfortable, but he was also trying to make himself comfortable. You know what I mean? Because mm. uh, even to this day, I still get I get nervous as a as a fucking teenager walking on the stage. I really? almost I al I almost can't handle it. You know, it just the nerves the nerves ramp up until it's just like. And then you get out there and hit your first few chords. You're like, okay, I'm cool. We're good. Now I can fucking dance around like a fucking ballerina and throw my guitar like a goof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the woo! Course, every everyone have see his issue, but I don't think you you ever. I don't know. You always like you say you always deliver 
you guys always deliver a, a good show. Yeah, we, we had we had chemistry. We got along together famously on stage, famously. Mm -hmm. You know, we knew exactly. We didn't have to look at each other to knew to know what each other was doing. It was mm -hmm. just it was just there, and we fucking nailed it. You know, so sure. pretty pretty happy about that. Mm -hmm. And is Kurt a martyr? How how many years is is less the that project? I don't know. And until 2017, because it, it just it morphed into 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 Vimic, right? Yes, so it's, it's essentially the same band with a couple of different members, you know. Okay, and there's any particular reason, or I'm not getting into it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it, we we put we had a good run. We put in a good run. We had a fantastic uh, group of people behind us, around us, within the band. And uh, a lot of circumstances are just, you know what? It didn't fucking work out. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? It didn't work out. And shit happens. I, shit does happen. And life happens. And, and all kinds of things happen. And I, I love all those guys. I made, you know, even though it wasn't really my kind of music, I made some really good fucking friends in that entire group of people. And I'm mm. grateful. For, and I'm grateful for that. And that's what I'm taking away from it. Mm. Oh, that's great. And right now you you're still you're kind of looking for new music when you try to you yeah, try I've, to I've discover got, new I've, bands or I've got I've got plenty of new music fucking rolling around behind me. You know, it's it's all it's all there. It just takes me a while to get it done because I've always been I've always been like over meticulous about the shit I do and mm -hmm. and I spend way too long trying to get things right and that's just the way it is with me. Mm -hmm. Um so You know, I'd love I'd love to go and play with some established band and just kind of step into something and just go. But at the same time, I'm completely happy being at home and doing my thing and making sandwiches and making music. Yeah. And we're good, man. Yeah, because I think most of people kind of think that life on the road is like like a movie, you know, and it, like, it, uh, it isn't. It's a <laughs> it's a dirty, filthy mess. It's like, yeah, it's it's it's. It's great when you're on the stage. Yeah. It's great when you go back, you you to the center yeah. of the stage mm -hmm. and people. It's, it's great. It's great when you're on stage, but it's terrible when you come off stage and all those stinky stage clothes are hanging outside your bunk on a hook, you know? <laughs> and you got to smell that shit all for goddamn night long until the next show. Yeah. Yeah. Not happening. <laughs> and you can you can sleep. You can sleep well, maybe. <laughs> People people romanticize that shit like crazy, yeah. but it's like, oh, you travel in a bus and all that. like, yeah. you know, hey, I'm thankful for all of that because in a van was a lot worse when those clothes are like right here, those <laughs> stinky stage clothes and, and the four week old ham that you got at some other show and you can't afford to buy any other food. So you've got yeah. that old stinky ham that you make sandwiches with. Yeah, it's it's appreciate what you got. You know, you're doing things that a lot of people don't get to do. So fucking love it. Yeah. And also you have to, it's like being a, for me, being a band is like being a, in a couple's relationship, you know? Yeah, yeah sure. Because you can, you can, you can, well, actually you can, but, um, but you can get away. You can mm. uh, escape. You have to. Especially if you're on tour, yeah, you, you have to see this Gotta person have, yeah. every day, and you have to get along, and yeah, yeah, and that doesn't always happen, mm, yeah. right? And that's <laughs> that's most certainly kind of what happened to us, you know. It uh, it got to the point, excuse me, whatever. It got to the point where it was like we got along on stage, and we didn't weren't getting along that great off stage, and. It became too much for some of us, and we all turned to our own. You know, you you go to drugs or alcohol or whatever it is you need to do to run away from each other, right. and it sucked. It sucked. And mm -hmm. as as an adult now, <laughs> and knowing how harmful that was, it's easy to say because I know where I went, and it was a fucking bad place. So in a lot of ways, was was strapping. I'm I'm happy it it. I'm not happy that it ended, but. I'm thankful that perhaps it stopped when it did because if I had gone too much further, it might have not ended that well. You know what I mean? Personally. Yeah, yeah sure. So, 
I, I'm, 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 I'm most thankful for the fact that here we are, we've been broken up longer than we were ever together mm. and people still revere us and, and Devin specifically, of course, uh, for what we did. Uh, how can, I got nothing to complain about, man. Yeah. Not, nothing, nothing. I've got, if you know, and, and here, let me wrap this entire interview up in, in a few sentences. Um, my wife and son, this is before the quarantine, they were out grocery shopping or something and they were, they were driving home and strapping young lad was on XM on the radio or whatever. And apparently my son looked over at my wife and he said, mom, if it wasn't for strapping young lad, I wouldn't even be here. <laughs> and, and my wife told me that when she got home and it hit me so hard, it hit me so hard because if I did nothing else in life, it brought me to that. I have that. I have my life now. Yeah. So that's, that's what I have to be thankful for. So you have, it's again, we come back to the perspective and, and yeah. that's, that's kind of where it's at for me. No, and I gotta, I gotta get back outside to my fucking family. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I really, I really thank you for, for yeah. this. And yeah, well, my pleasure, man. I hope, uh, we've, we've known yeah. each other for a while. Yes. Actually, yeah. if people don't know, we actually collaborate each other. We did. We did. Song. Oh, country, yeah. Um, that, was, that, that was a great song, man. That was a great song. I enjoyed playing okay. on it. So maybe we'll get to do it again sometime. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Yet have a. I'm Simon. gonna give you one. Simon. <laughs> uh, my beer's almost empty, but I'll, I'm gonna finish it with a cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Much man. love. Much love, Ivan. Bye.